When things go wrong, as they sometimes will When the road you're trudging seems all uphill When the funds are low and the debts are high And you want to smile but you have to sigh When care is pressing you down a bit Rest if you must but do not ever quit Success is a failure turned inside out Let's talk and clear the clouds of doubt Bismillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to a new episode of Let's Talk. I'm your host, Khalil Amunet, and I'm joined with our guest, Sheikh Karim Abu Zaid. He is the director of Ihda Productions and also the Imam of the Colorado Muslim Society. Assalamu alaikum and welcome, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And we're also joined by our in studio audience. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome. The effects that drugs and alcohol have on our lives is disastrous. Millions of lives have been ruined and many lives have been lost. People's entire fortunes have been spent pursuing this deadly habit. So we're going to talk about alcohol and drug abuse from an Islamic perspective. So I'm going to turn the show to uh, Sheikh Karim and he's going to uh, introduce us to the topic. In alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu. ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله The subject is a serious one indeed and um, I would like to uh, throw a ground um, from which we can uh, address the subject because um, the title of the episode, if you may have noticed, uh, Drugs and Alcohol Abuse, an Islamic Perspective. First of all, the religion of Islam has uh, what we, we call maqasid al-shari'ah, holistic aims or objectives. And one of these aims is to preserve the mind, the brain, for the human being. Uh, that is why you will find out Islam stands so firm on the issue and no compromise. And I'm talking about drugs and alcohol in particular. Um, if you look at our deen, our religion, you will find it made of two uh, main uh, uh, basically components or parts. Uh, haram, halal. Do, do not do. Uh, and this is obvious from a hadith Mukharraj uh, fi uh, Muslim, hadith Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one day he stood up and he addressed his companion saying, uh, "Allah has prescribed Hajj Abu Nu. Inna Allah kataba alaykum al Hajj fa Hajju." Then a companion stood up and said, "Ya Rasulullah, every year, al Aqrab ibn Habis fi ahad riwayat hadha al Hadith. That's his name. Rasulullah got a little bit upset after he repeated the question three times, and then he made that statement." Listen, whatever I command you to do, do to the best of your capacity. And whatever I forbade you from doing, stay away from it. فَهَذَا هُوَ الدِّينَ Do, do not do. Uh, there is a great wisdom in our religion. Listen carefully to this, because this is going to build up. We're going somewhere with this. Look at this. الْحَلَالُ بَيِّنْ وَالْحَرَامُ بَيِّنْ so those two components were made crystal clear. And the statement, Al-Halal is crystal clear, Al-Haram is crystal clear, is one of the statements of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hadith al-Nu'man ibn Bashir fi Sahih al-Imam al-Bukhari. One of these things which fall into the area of Haram is alcohol. I would rather use the word intoxicants. 
And I'll explain later why. Here is the text. Here is what we have in the Quran. And you will find no other clearer text than this one. قال الله تعالى and the verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah يا أيها الذين آمنوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the believers and always recall the statement of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu an that when you hear that call in the Quran open your ears because Allah your creator is directing you to do something that is good for you or banning you from doing something that is bad for you. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, O ye who believe, innama al-khamru wal-maysiru wal-ansabu wal-azlamu rejisun min amal al-shaytani fajtanibu. Intoxicants, gambling, casting arrows, believing in its divinity, slaughtering for idols, on a certain area, uh, act of shirk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you those things are from the works of shaitan. Is a production made by shaitan. Made, something that is made by shaitan, stay away from it. طيب, what is the agenda of shaitan? What does shaitan wants from you? The next verse, إنما يريد الشيطان أن يوقع بينكم العداوة والبغضاء في الخمر والميسر ويصدكم عن ذكر الله وعن الصلاة فهل أنتم منتهون؟ شيطان wants basically to cultivate animosity and hatred amongst you and hinder you from the remembrance of Allah and hinder you from the salah. What are you going to do? Are you going to say, we hear and obey? Or are you going to find excuses to go around it? Uh, right away, uh, this command was revealed at the time of the companions, correct? I mean, the Quran was revealed at the time of the companions. You know that the Arabs, they use drink alcohol like we drink water now. Seriously, yeah. like right now, if, if, you, if, you, if you go to somebody, visit his house, can I get you some tea? Yes. Can I get you some coffee? So they say, can I get you some wine? Yeah. <laughs> and it, it used to be part of the fabric of the society. They used to wake up in the morning drinking. And this is the wisdom why the gradual implementation of the unlawfulness of alcohol Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not ban it right away. But at the same time, listen to this carefully, at the same time, at the same time, even so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not ban alcohol, wine, liquor, intoxicants right away. But the companions themselves, even so, it was not made haram yet, they felt funny about it. Why did they feel funny about it? For because what because it, it affects your brain. Yeah. It takes away the one thing that distinguishes you from the animals. <laughs> Actually, animals are much better than you because they are governed by their instinct. Yes. They have an instinct. But when you lose your brain, you're worse than the animal. So they, they felt funny about it. Yeah. All, that's why the verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ They used to come to the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah. الخمر والميسر what is that alcohol وعمر بن الخطاب used to make dua اللهم أنزل لنا في الخمر نصا شافيا oh Allah reveal for us a criterion once it comes to الخمر look at this now but there were companions who did drink yes because it's lawful it was lawful it's not haram but Look at those companions who were drinking, Khalil. When this verse was revealed, and the one who narrates that story, Anas ibn Malik, radiyallahu anh, and the hadith in the two sahih, al-Bukhari wa Muslim, yaqul Anas, kuntu saqi al-qaw, I was serving some of the companions, who used to drink because it's lawful. Yeah. It's not haram, it's lawful. I used to serve them 
wine in the house of Abi Talha. Abi Talha is the husband of his uh, mother, Umm Sulaim. Then this verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah, the verse that I began uh, re uh, the episode with, with uh, revealed. Then a cooler went through Medina. Ayyuhal Muslimun, O Muslims, inna Allah harram al-khamr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made alcohol haram. Yaqul Anas, yuqsim, wa yaqul, Anas swears and he says, some of these companions were holding the cup right here. Throw it away. Okay, inshallah, we're going to... We... Sami'na wa ata'na. Okay, uh, that's uh, all the time we have for this segment, inshallah. We'll be back to talk more about the harmful effects and uh, also some about, something about the history of uh, the prohibition of alcohol, inshallah. Uh, we'll be back, inshallah. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Uh, in the last segment we were talking about the Prophet's companions and how they dealt with the prohibition of alcohol. They basically said we hear and obey and they stopped drinking. Uh, how, what kind of comparison can you make between uh, the past and the present? Uh, we see alcohol is a huge problem now, especially among the youth. So uh, how do we, how, what kind of comparison can we make? You see, the, the, the caliber of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been always, we hear and we obey. Yeah. Like we, we quoted Hadith Anas, Ibn Malik radiallahu uh, He actually says uh, this also in the Hadith, that in the morning, the corridors of Medina were floating with wine. Spilt. No, done, done. We hear and we obey. Uh, if we travel um, through time and look at our time now, it's very sad. And unfortunately, it's something that, you know, um, something that, that, that is especially amongst the youth. And something that the Prophet wasallam through divine revelation predicted. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, والحديث في التاريخ للبخاري بسنة صحيح سيكون ناس من أمتي أو لا يشربن ناس من أمتي الخمرة يسمونها بغير اسمها. He said that some of my أمة, some of my followers will drink intoxicants, wine, liquor, you name it, but they will give it different names. They would call it, for example, spiritual drinks. Spirits. Spirits. It's not bad. It helps the spirits. So look at the companions. They said we hear and obey. But we justify our drinking and our addiction to it. As a matter of fact, this hadith is narrated by Abi Malik al-Ash'ari. Abi Malik al-Ash'ari has another hadith that is also he narrated. And the hadith is Sahih bukhari uh, it has what we, uh, the experts of hadith call it hadith mu'allaq, a chain of narration. But Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, rahimahullah, connected it. He, he, he quoted the sanad for it. Well, hadith sahih. Listen to this. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Sayakunu aqwamun min ummati. Some of my followers will do this. Yastahillun. Yastahillun. The word yastahil means to make halal. Something that was what? Haram. Yastahillun al hira adultery. Oh, she's my girlfriend, my boyfriend. We wrote a piece of paper. Huh? Uh, we got two couple of our dudes, you know, to witnessing and we're, we're cool. We're married. Huh? She, I'm dating. I only go, I'm only sleep with her. That's adultery. What are you talking about? It's adultery. Hira. Harir for men. Wearing silk for men is haram. Wal khamr, alcohol. Wal ma'azif, an instrument, music. ف, uh, and unfortunately, also, it's one of the signs of the hours. 
كما في حديث انس في الصحيحين النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ان من اشراط الساعه هي سدس وان اوف ذا بورتنس ساينز اوف ذا دي فريزركشن ان يرفع العلم ويظهر الجهل ويشرب الخمر ذات واين ويل بي كونسيومد ان ابندنس ناو وات از تو وات از تو بليم فور ذس بيكوز اي مين ذا باست از سو سو ماتش ديفرنت uh right now we have i mean huge billboards all over the streets it's in the commercials we have television newspapers they i mean the selection of these drinks are so much it's easily accessible uh, i think you know uh, in the prophet's time what did they drink uh, it was made from dates now i mean uh, we have alcohol made from every kind of ingredient you could ever think of so i mean it's just uh basically the market's flooded with this stuff so i mean it, I'm not, I'm not trying to justify anything, but I mean, aren't, isn't the situation different? In the, in the, in the last century, or in, in the 1880, um, I'm not sure, sometime in America. In America. America wanted to stop people from drinking. That happened, actually. Because it was bad. So they, they had a campaign. I think they spent up to 80 million dollars. This is a lot of money then. At the time, a lot of money. And it was a time of depreciation or yeah, the dep- depression. Depression, something yeah. like that. So they started alerting people do not drink, drink is haram, do not drink, drink not not haram. I mean, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> Look oh, at the end. Haram. Look at the end. Huh? Okay. Please do not drink while you're driving, okay? It's okay, just drink. Okay, you're going to have somebody uh, uh, driving with you, that's fine. Uh, again, compare between the companions and this. Yeah. Khamr is haram, done. That's it. That's done deal. Look at those. They couldn't. Why? Because it takes faith, it takes belief to give, about, to give up a desire for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the point that I really wanted to come across, uh, Brother Khalil, regarding in, in that context, yeah. uh, but answering your question is, now a mafia, alcohol is a mafia, yeah. and they have the representative in the, in, in the Congress and in, in the, uh, everywhere. Uh, there is no way even you can think about banning it now. It's too late. They would bring you down. They will not vote for you anymore. And they will influence, they will run a lot of ads in order to influence people not to vote for you. So it's becoming... Uh, it's a part of society. It's regular. part of the society. Once you turn 21, it's... It's done. It's Actually, it's, 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 it's a sign of shame. Yeah. If, if, if you do not drink, like in high schools now, in public schools, if you do not smoke a joint, man, this is not a man. <laughs> Seriously, he's not a man. Right? He has no guts. He has yeah. no guts. He has not grown up yet. Come on, you haven't smoked a joint yet? Yeah. Come. So, uh, but, but uh, again, we're, we're covering the issue from an Islamic perspective. Yeah. There are some misconceptions, uh, what we call uh, the, the scholars in, of this Ummah Shubuhat, once it comes to intoxicants and wine. Like we cited in the first segment, that the text is clear. All these bad things, intoxicants, gambling, so forth, haram, ijtanibu, do not come near it. Yet you will find Muslims trying to find justifications to drink or smoke marijuana or hashish. And they use the excuse that, oh, these are new things. These, this is not no, the actually, Quran. actually, not in the Quran, but yeah. they don't realize that in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, there are things that refute these justifications. Yeah. Example, number one. They tell you, okay, Shaykh, what's in the Quran is al-khamr, wine. It does not talk about marijuana. It does not talk like in Egypt here, bangu. They have bangu here in Egypt. It does not talk about bangu. It does not talk about hashish. It does not talk about shots. It talks about khamr. Innama al-khamr wal maysir. Khamr. Liquor. Wine. I will like, come. Fi sahih al-Bukhari. Hadith Abdullah ibn Umar. Ibn al-Khattab. Radhi Allahu anhuma. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says, Kullu muskirin khamr. Wa kullu muskirin haram. 
anything that causes your brain to be fogged. Anything, any substance, you name it, that causes you to go into a state of drunkenness. You lose that brain. It's considered to be khamr, like liquor, like wine, and it is haram. So you name it, anything, even if you go and sniff gasoline in your car. Some people do that. They go sit in the car and sniff gasoline to get high. Anything that makes you high takes the ruling of, of alcohol. But here is another misconception, Khalil. They come and say, but Sheikh, I only take a little bit that does not get me drunk. I only smoke a little bit, but I don't get high. Just a little bit. I go like ta'ala. Come. Come. Fi musnad al-imam wa sunan al-imam al-tirmidi hadith Jabir ibn Abdullah رضي الله عنهما listen to the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم saying إذا كان كثيره مسكر فقليله حرام if a bucket full of it makes you intoxicated uh, intoxicates you then a sip of it is a haram well we have a lot of drinks nowadays they're non-alcoholic beer they're drinks uh, that you know I think uh, the alcohol is very very like it's a smidgen uh, what is, what haram. is it's oh, haram also. It, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> if Even a bucket full of it intoxicates, then a little a sip of it is haram. Okay. This is this is the text. This is what it reads. Here is another, uh, uh, and I know you have a lot of questions, but uh, let me just finish that that last misconception. They come to you and you, Sheikh, I use it for medicine. <laughs> well, you know, I, I I'm an imam by 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 you know that's my job. I got some people who come to me and say, Sheikh, I really have a lot of khushu' in the salah when I'm high. <laughs> <laughs> ya Allah, look how far is it. Uh, Sheikh, I, I, I treat people, uh, I'm, I'm so kind to the people when I'm high, but when I'm not high, I'm mean to the people. Uh, it's, it's my medicine, Sheikh. It's a medicine. I say, come, fi sahih al-imam Muslim, a companion from Yemen. His name is Suwaid ibn Tariq. He came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Ya Yemen, we are in Yemen, we use uh, this substance for remedy, for treatment. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Inna hada, it's a disease itself. And there is a clearer text, straightforward text, Hadith Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Fi Sa'il Imam Muslim, uh, uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, listen to this carefully, listen to this, Ma ja'ala Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never places the remedy for my ummah in what he made haram. مَا جَعَلَ اللَّهِ دَوَاءَ أُمَّتِي فِي مَحَرَّمْ Something that Allah makes haram and then he's going to place a remedy in it. Ah. ف, uh, these are some of the misconceptions that lead a lot of people unfortunately to fall into the trap. Uh, and maybe, uh, you know, we can shed more light on this inshallah. Okay, inshallah. Uh, we can uh, take some questions for the audience. Yes, yes. Sheikh, is there a wisdom behind uh, the prohibition of uh, intoxication in general? Like I said at the very beginning of the episode, our sharia, our, you see, mankind, the human being, is the masterpiece that Allah created, if I may use the term. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ We are the best of Allah's creation. We as Muslims, we believe that. That Allah has honored us, has preferred us above the rest of his creation. But we do not go to the level like the Christian says that we, and the Jew says, we are the children of Allah. We yeah. do not say that. But we are his masterpiece. We are his best creation. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a religion. The best religion, which is what? Al-Islam. Inna deena inda Allah al-Islam. This religion is aqeedah. A creed which focuses on la ilaha illallah. And from the aqeedah comes the branches, which is the sharia. The sharia has holistic aims, maqasid, to preserve the life, your life, and to preserve your brain, to preserve your money, your property, to preserve your life. And to preserve your irat, your dignity. That's why adultery is haram. So there are five holistic aims. The brain is one of these. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited it. Because it causes 
your brain to be fucked. Without a brain, look at the people when they are uh, stoned or when they are drunk in the street. Yeah, they tell you that 70% of the accidents happen because of uh, uh, alcohol related. Yes. You harm the society, you don't only harm yourself. Uh, right now they spend a lot of money, a lot of money in America to treat people who are stoned. So you go get stoned and then they take my tax money huh, to, to treat the people. So, uh, you're expensive. You're expensive. Uh, and that is why uh, it is very sad to see a lot of Muslim youth in particular falling into this trap. And it is time to, 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 to educate our youth about it. Uh, uh, and hopefully we can do this uh, uh, with this show, inshallah. Are there any more questions? Go ahead, inshallah. Okay, Jazakumullah khair. Uh, you just uh, mentioned the underlying cause uh, behind the prohibition of khamr uh, or wine intoxicants in general. And you also mentioned the hadith, كل مسكر خمر وكل مسكر حرام. Here, the underlying cause is uh, that it causes uh, some, uh, the person to become high. What about using alcohol for different purposes, like for manufacturing uh, perfumes or for uh, purifying uh, wounds and so on? Now, uh, the underlying cause uh, uh, behind prohibition no longer exists. So is it still haram? Or? The answer is yes. Yeah. It does not exist. You see, the cause, the, the, the reason why it was prohibited because of that. You use it for anything else. Even so, uh, we do not recommend to, you know, there are other perfume and other, I mean, the scholars, the, the fuqaha, the jurists, which shed more light in this saying that, listen, if there is somebody who manufactures perfumes without alcohol, get this one instead. Because there is a debate uh, amongst the scholars whether alcohol is considered to be, to be a substance that is impure or not. Yes. Impure, that means if it comes to, in your clothes, in your body, can you pray with it or not? There is a debate, and I don't want to get into this. Yes. So it's better to, but, but the, the, the authentic and, and, and the most correct, it is not. Uh, but again, uh, other school of thoughts would, would look at it differently. But yes, if it is used for something else uh, that would benefit humanity, Absolutely. There is nothing, no harm. We're going to go to a break right now and we'll be right back. Dear viewers, Hoda programs can be watched in the English section of the in-flight entertainment directory on board all Saudi airline flights, domestic and international. Sit back. Relax and enjoy watching Hoda's entertaining and enlightening shows on your trip. Hoda wishes you a safe and successful journey. Hoda, a light in every home. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. We were just talking about uh, drugs and alcohol from an Islamic perspective. Now we're going to look at the subject from more of a psychiatric, psychological perspective. And to help us with that is Dr. Mahmoud Habibi, is a lecturer of uh, psychiatry at Ain Shams University. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, the first question I wanted to ask is, what are the, some of the signs of uh, somebody is hooked on a drug or is addicted to alcohol? What are the signs and the symptoms of this? There are many criteria to diagnose that, that, that someone is hooked on or dependent, which is the more scientific name for addiction. Uh, but it's uh, simple as lo loss of control. Mm. When, so when someone loses control of his use, this, uh, this loss of control has many um, signs and aspects. For example, what's called tolerance, taking yeah. excessive amounts to have the same effect you know, if you have the same amount, he doesn't have that, that high that he wants. Withdrawal symptoms, another important perspective, that when he stops or decreases the amount he takes, he suffers from symptoms which are, are either psychological or even somatic. Somatic uh, is in uh, the body. Yeah, pain, yeah, pain. Yeah, pain, uh, pain, running nose, lacrimation, and m many other things. Uh, another important uh, issue is uh, uh, the cravings, the urge that you have some sort of very strong urge and very strong cravings towards having this substance, uh, even if he's convinced that he shouldn't do. Uh, relapse is another important thing that he tries to stop or decreases, but he fails. 
mm. affecting the aspects of his life. For example, neglecting important activities that he used to do. All these are, uh, are, are signs of addiction. And there are many more, actually, but we should know that having three of these symptoms are enough to diagnose substance dependence or addiction. So uh, how can we prevent ourselves from uh, falling into these traps? There's a lot of uh, different kinds of uh, drugs, also the prescription drugs. People, is a huge problem nowadays is getting uh, hooked on, pres like a doctor will prescribe you pain medication for pain, but you keep taking it after the pain is gone and it becomes a huge problem. Uh, what are, how can we prevent uh, things like that? Prescription drugs are one of the most important issues to be discussed, actually, because some people just escape from the label of addiction to the label of, I'm having a medication, that's just a medication. Yeah. So as from the name, prescription drugs should be taken as they are prescribed, not increasing and under medical supervision. And unfortunately, especially in the area of the Middle East, many people that just take medications because, because they heard that they are good or because they said that they through the, through the pain. And here we know that you can just go into a pharmacy without a prescription and, oh, I want uh, whatever. And it's, of course, in the U.S., that's completely uh, illegal and you can be arrested for it. But here it's like... Uh, yeah, you just go and just uh, having some sort of pain or having some sort of cough and just want the medication. Then the pharmacist says, that's, that's, a very, uh, that's a very good one. Or yeah. your neighbor gives you... A, and here's the problem. Many people, many, many persons just escape from the title of drugs of abuse like, uh, like heroin, like hashish, into prescription drugs yeah. like benzodiazepines, like uh, opioids. And then he said, I'm just taking a drug. That's a medication with the yeah. problem. So these drugs should be taken under strict medical supervision. And uh, that's, that's a very important issue. And that's why the laws of medication is very strict all over the world. I hope we'll have it in our region as well to be that strict. So can we talk about how drugs harm, uh, how they harm the person? Uh, what are the, I mean, what are the most harmful drugs, you know, how does uh, alcohol fit into that also? Or what is the harmful effect of alcohol? The, the problem of alcohol separated from other drugs is some sort of historical or legal uh, problem, and it's not medical. Okay. Harmful. Alcohol is as harmful as the other drugs. The, 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 all the point lies in how you take the drugs or how much you take it. So ha alcohol having long history with uh, the humanity, so many communities can't prevent it or can't just say we should uh, stop alcohol. But medically speaking and psychiatrically speaking, alcohol have the same problems like other drugs. And the, the issue lies in the, the usage of those. How, how, do, how do you use these yeah. drugs? And uh, losing control makes many problems, mainly medical and psychiatric, social, legal, as well as vocational, you know, in your work. But the point in drug addiction is that you have some sort of pleasure, extreme pleasure, and at the same time you, are, you don't judge things well. All the drugs of addiction disturbs your judgment, your orientation, your concentration. Yeah. And, and so the judgment of what's right and what's wrong, what's beneficial and what's harmful began to be disturbed. So the person enters into medical problems, and there's a uh, long, long list of medical problems, psychiatric problems, vocational problems in his work, neglecting his work, his studies, legal problems, because there's some sort of strong relation between drugs, including alcohol and crime. Yes, yes. For example, you, you, you may know that United Nations Office for Drugs is UN ODC, United Nations Office for Drugs and Crime. They just, they, it's the it's same. It's the same office. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the same office because they are very strong college. Traffic accidents is another, we consider it medical and legal problem at the same time. And social Also, the murder, murder, uh, all, I mean, uh, it just completely takes away your inhibitions. You're, you can't yeah, control yeah. your thoughts, your actions. Yeah, so, so, so the, 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 there are many problems, many in these aspects, medical, psychiatric, legal, vocational, as, with, uh, as, as well as social problems, and these problems that p p creates the, 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 prob the, the main problem of addiction, actually. Yeah. And then the, f the person does not recognize all these problems. That's why mostly people around him are the, 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 the ones who say, you have a problem, you should yeah. take in consideration being treated. Yeah. What is the Islamic uh, perspective on prescription drugs? Uh, because, uh, well, they can help people, but also they can harm people. I mean, what is, what is uh, your point of view on that? Like we, uh, we mentioned, um, um, any substance that intoxicates takes the, um, the legal uh, or the ruling yeah. of um, alcohol. Yeah. 
So, um, but if uh, it is prescribed, prescribed, yeah. uh, like uh, the doctor uh, mentioned, under strict supervision, and this is the only resort for the person to find treatment to save his life, uh, it is accepted in Islam. Yeah. But again, it cannot be abused. So, are there drugs that uh, you you're sick? You're taking a drug. It causes uh, a change in the way you think. It actually does affect your mind. You may be more happier or something like that. But it is helping you at the same time. So uh, what is your view on that? I think we should see something here. These drugs are taken in severe conditions. Yeah. For example, you you go under anesthesia when you're ma making some sort of an operation, performing an operation. You have opioid as an analgesic when you have some sort of advanced cancer. These, it's not that, that, that common to be used. These drugs are not that common to be used. They are mostly taken in severe cases or resistant cases. And so it's not the, the aim of taking the drug is not to be happy. You know, all the antidepressants and uh, these substances to treat depression are not substances of abuse by any means. They don't cause the high. They treat depression, and there's a, a, a major difference between these two. But when we talk about opioids, when we talk about these drugs, they are taken in mostly in severe condition for a reason other than to make someone happy or to make someone uh, feeling better. It's for curing or soothing some sort of severe pain or letting him sleep because he would enter into some sort of a major operation. Yeah. Or th sometimes there are either resistant cases or emergency cases. And as I said before, the target of giving the medication is not by any means to make the some someone happy or feeling better. It's other somatic or bodily complaint that need to be treated in some under severe restrictions, as I said. So what, uh, what is the definition of a drug? What is that? What is a drug? We, we, we prefer to call them substance of abuse mm. because, you know, for example, alcohol is not a drug. Yeah. Uh, heroin is not a drug, actually. They are substances. A drug, so substance of abuse, are substances that may cause abuse or dependence. And that's because they do the, the both things. They, yeah. s they s cause extreme sudden pleasure. And mostly, uh, under mostly, it's uh, most of them, except for nicotine, they disturb the conscious level. They disturb the judgment, the concentration, the 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 the, the orientation, uh, the attention. The only substance of abuse and dependence that does not cause this disturbance is nicotine. Other than that, all this both do both. What is nic nicotine? Is a drug, but it's you basically get hooked on it. But there's no nothing like uh, you don't get high or anything. It just hooks you. It's you, you know, it's you get high, you, you get, get some high. sort of pleasure, but without losing your judgment and concentration. Okay. That's 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 why you can, for example, drive while you're smoking. I mean, nicotine or tobacco. But it comes, it causes in some people some sort of pleasure. And that's why people smoke yeah. because they feel the pleasure of the smoking, and and this, this led them neglect the hazards, the, all the hazards of the, of the medi medi medical problems and uh, you know that some social problem that some people hate the nicotine or the smoke but it doesn't affect the concentration and the attention you are not disturbed you are not having You're, the, it's not changing your mind anything. yeah there's not this fog on your mind so what is the, the Islamic point of view on nicotine for example uh, what is uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ do not kill yourselves it has been proven medically, and that is why there is a consensus amongst the majority of the jurists of the Ummah that nicotine is haram. That is the ruling, because it can contribute to the death of a human being, as well as it is khaba'ith. One of the things that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to do is to make the khaba'ith, the impurities, unlawful. Wa yuharrimu alaykum al khaba'ith to make the impurities unlawful, for sure. Um, uh, nicotine and, and, and smoking is one of these impurities and that is why the ruling it is haram so can we discuss uh, habits versus addiction what is a habit like caffeine uh, it's it's not considered a drug is it a drug what is caffeine it's let's make it in a much more simpler way that the habit is something that you can quit easily you yeah. can change easily when you travel, for example, and you don't have the, the caffeine or you don't have your your, your, your jogging suits. You can you can quit jogging for for, for a while. Yeah. Addiction is 
is cancelling all your consideration, cancelling all your plans to Basically perform. Basically, your sole focus is your addiction. Yeah, yeah that's, that's you can't change anything. It, it changes you, but you can't change anything. You can't quit it easily. It's, it's, as I said, it's loss of control. You, you are just attached to it. Yeah. That's why, for example, one of the misconceptions regarding, again, nicotine, that nicotine is just a habit. No, it's some sort of dependence or addiction. Because, we, for example, in Ramadan, for example, in, in, while people are fasting, most people are fasting when they go and they go and eat and drink after, when it's come to big fast, yeah. the fasting time. But the smokers, they it's quit everything and just directly, yeah, and after, at Sahur, before Fajr, yeah. they're smoking because they quit nicotine. Yeah. That's why that's dependence. It is uh, very attached to it, actually. I, I, if it was a, if it were, if it were a habit, then just I, I let it, I have no problem in quitting it for a few hours or even for a few days, even months. So what can, uh, so caffeine is considered what, a mild stimulant or what is? It's a, it's a mild, a very mild stimulant, but some people get dependent on caffeine. And these are the people who, when they decrease or stop caffeine, have severe headaches, have severe fatigue. But it's, it's a very low percentage. Mostly it's a mild stimulant that people have just as, as a habit. But there's a very, very minor percentage that get addicted to caffeine. And when they decrease or they stop caffeine, they have symptoms, mostly headache and severe fatigue. So can uh, caffeine be considered haram for some people then? Uh, if, it, if they're at that level or they're, uh, I, I mean, I spending drink, so much? I drink coffee myself. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, so, everybody does. Yeah, yeah. So it is. Uh, so it's like, haram. Like, yes. uh, like our doctor mentioned, you could, uh, once I travel, and that applies to me. You know, I, you know the coffee in America is totally different to here. Yeah. It's yeah. not available everywhere. And once it I costs three dollars yeah. uh, at least. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but once I come over here, I mean, I can live without it. Uh, I just maybe get some, you know, a little bit headache here and there. But one day or two, when you're done. But again, like he mentioned, is you can you control it. It's not controlling you. Yeah. That is the difference between it and other substance that is made unlawful. Okay. Can we talk about like uh, natural occurring drugs in the body, like adrenaline? Some people are sort of like adrenaline junkies. They like jumping off, uh, bungee jumping or jumping out of planes. Uh, can we call them addicts? Uh, first, every, everything that is abused have another alternative in our, in our body. We have opioids, we have opioids in our body, we have alcohol in our body, so, some sort like really, alcohol-like alcohol like substance. Okay. We have cannabis-like something, hashish-like something in our mm. body that God created inside us to have some sort of function to soothe us to and it's uh, all decrease. Imbalance, yeah, yeah, and it's in, in a balance. But the, this in, endogenous, we call it endogenous because it is inside our body, they do not affect our concentration or attention. Just soothe our pain, make, uh, make us feel better. That's why when someone takes it from outside he, and he stops it, he has some sort of pain and has some sort of, uh, he became very impulsive, very aggressive because he's, there's something inside him that's, that he lost, actually. Regarding the people who like risk-taking behavior, yeah, yeah there, there are some people that have the pleasure in risk-taking. Risk-taking, which is not just jumping. It's a, for example, we have here in our region the reckless driving, yeah. driving fast and having some sort of uh, have a driving, driving and sudden brakes. And th this, that's th these are one of the, of the, of the things that make sometimes people really high. Yeah, because and sometimes they lose the concentration. In, in, for yeah, example. road rage is a sickness. It's uh, I mean, when you're driving, when I drove in America and someone cuts you off, something activates in your body. You have to do the same thing to them. Yeah, and it's sort of it's almost uncontrollable, but. Yeah, 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 and uh, actually, it, it, there's it. so so what's called adrenaline junkies or people who love high risk situations. It's some sort of not definitely addiction, but some sort of behavior, some sort of consider them behavioral addictions. Okay. Uh, behavioral addiction, and there's a part called behavioral addiction, like internet gambling, or there are some sort of addiction where the, which do not depend on substance, external substance, it's in, on the behavior. One it's of them is having high risk behaviors in all uh, contexts. So then, is drug addiction considered psychiatric or psych psychological? Since n there was nothing there to start with, basically, you decided to do that your, on yourself. You weren't hooked to anything. You, there was no desire in your brain to drink. There was no desire in your brain to take drugs. But you did that yourself. On the other hand, uh, these, nat these psychiatric things, they were because of some sort of imbalance in your brain or your body. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a big question, actually. The, 
uh, addiction is considered a psychiatric disorder because not anyone who tries substance become an addict. The addiction comes when that someone just is trying or just having for once or he thinks that he will control and he loses control. And that's the point. Yes, he started it by, by himself and no one denies this and nothing forced him to start it. But he didn't know or he didn't consider that he may, he may, be, he may lose control. Yeah. He may be some sort of drowned. In, you know, sometimes we have some sort of metaphor for this, like the one who drowned in the sea. Yes. He, he is the he's one who overwhelmed. Yeah, he is the one who entered the sea. Yeah. But he didn't plan to drown. He, plan he, he, ju he just wanted to swim, but he was some sort of took in too inside. Confident yeah, and he's drowned. Okay. We can we can blame him for starting, but we can not blame him for drowning. Okay. Uh, uh, inshallah, I would uh, offer the uh, Islamic formula. Yes, yes. For falling into uh, drugs. Uh, Maybe inshallah in the second later, segment, inshallah. or the fourth segment actually. Uh, we'll go for a break right now and uh, stay with us.